The Straight Red Card is sponsored by Roughneck Scarves. Visit Roughneck Scarves for your supporters' gear from Seattle, Portland, New York, to the Philadelphia Union, and anything MLS to the English Premier League. Visit Roughneck Scarves at roughneckscarves.com. The U-20s recently failed to uh, reach the Youth World Cup. This is the first time in a long time down there in Guatemala. Um, Brett and I were kind of talking about this before. Is that really a big deal or is it not a big deal? And how does it reflect on uh, how we're developing things here in U.S. soccer? In some ways, uh, it's, a, it's a big deal because you always like to have that as a base for development. And uh, it's a disappointment because we had qualified, I think, maybe the previous four tournaments. Uh, and in another sense, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot on that under-20 level because really um, no one knows who the players are. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, Rangan, you know, teaches a style that's, that's possession-based and based on developing skills. And uh, I think 150 different players uh, had opportunities to play on that team, and yeah. it's it's just a different kind of a crapshoot. And you know, it would be nice if 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 that were plugged in every every time in one sense, but in another sense, uh, it's just one of those things that uh, might not be that important. You know, and no one no one can deny that Ranjan actually spreads his net out wide when he searches for his team. Um, I mean, he does give everybody and anybody a shot that he feels that could improve the team. Um, I personally don't. I personally don't see this as a big issue. Um, it's obviously. I mean, as an American, I mean, we want to win. That's a big thing. Yeah. We want to win. Yeah. Um, but that's not everything, you know. And it's not not necessarily saying that the fact that we didn't qualify means that we're developing players. But you know, we had a we had a team that went down to Guatemala, was undefeated all the way up until they faced Guatemala, and they ended up losing to the home team. Um, even at the senior level. Um, we hadn't beaten Guatemala in Guatemala for over 20 years until Bradley uh, came in as a manager, and it's it, it's a t- it's a tough environment. The kids at that age are, like you said, it's a crapshoot. Um, some games they'll be great, some games they'll be bad. Their inconsistency level is massive at that point. Um, the fact is that we had a team that was highly highly club oriented. Uh, they are all playing, most of which were playing professionally. I think only like maybe two were playing at the college level, and right. some of them were actually seeing first team uh, the senior squad for their club. I mean the first team, you know, and that, that's that's a great sign to look at rather than saying, oh they didn't qualify. That's that's a negative. We should be looking at what they're doing at, at the club level more so than their actual national level at that level. Yeah, a lot of those. Kids from Guatemala are actually professionals in a professional environment. Have been at a you know professional academy for years. It's difficult down there. Uh, you know, Jurgen played several games in Central America, and he said there were you know senior men who did not like to go there that were intimidated by the environment, and it was a huge issue to go down there and have to you know get a result. Yeah, I mean, the only bad part about it really is that they're going to miss out on the experience of playing in the big, exactly. you know, in the big games uh, coming up in the World Cup and then gain even more experience, and that's kind of what we want them to get. But at the same time, um, you look back at the 2007 team, the U-20 team that went to the quarterfinals, and you look at that strip of, of the roster, and you have some successes. Michael Bradley stands out. Uh, Josie Altador has not really been a huge success overseas, but he's done all right. Dax and uh, McCarty and, and Robbie Rogers are, I think, have great careers. But then you take note of guys that are barely playing or struggling or not even playing at all, yeah. like Gabriel Ferrari, Sal Zizzo, Freddie Adu has you know, been all over the place. Preston Zimmerman, Dan Lee Zettel is out of soccer. <laughs> yeah, so maybe it's really not that in, that important in the end. Yeah, our case could be made either way, and I mean, uh, as Americans, like uh, Brett said, we always like to get a result and, you know, puff our chests out, but uh, <laughs> it's it's a different, uh, if it's a different animal in under-20s, and a lot of, you know, even third-world countries are ahead of us in terms of, you know, figuring out who the athletes are and giving them a chance to develop by the time they're 20 years old. Yeah. 
I want to leave this conversation as far as saying that if Ranjan is dropped from the U-20 team, I think the USSF needs to keep him on as a scouting uh, person. Because, quite frankly, he has uh, an amazing ability to scout players, find talents uh, at all levels. And, you know, it might be players that have a very small connection to the U.S., but they still have that connection to the U.S., what makes them eligible. Yeah. What do you think, Charles? I mean, should Samus uh, Rungan stay on, or should he go? I see, a, you know, there's there's pluses and minuses either way. Of course, he's got the experience with the U-20s. He's got the network out. He's a very fine uh, person, a fine uh, coach who grew up in the Ajax system. He teaches the kids a lot of uh, exciting, uh, you know, play. And uh, on the other hand, uh, you know, the, the results are, you know, a lot of a lot of countries. The first thing they do when a result is not achieved is they fire the coach and mm-hmm. bring someone new in. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh, you know, there's a network of coaches, and it's a positive thing in that, that it's a very strong network. But it's, it can be negative in that you know certain people don't get opportunities. So, uh, you know, a case could be made either way. I'm not always mm-hmm. sure of yeah. either way. Right. We don't want him feeling comfortable with his job, but we also want uh, some level of consistency at that coaching level. So, well, what I'm hearing from Charles, and it's something I do understand, uh, as far as the USS, USSF goes, and a lot of the ways decisions are made about who gets what job and who doesn't. Um, am I wrong in 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 assuming, uh, Charles, that you're saying that maybe that's not as open and open minded as it should be? Well, I, I have to laugh, and, you know, again, there are pluses and minuses to that here. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, the um, people who have been around and have been through the wars have more of a chance, you know, of, of being observed in, uh, in one sense. But sometimes, you know, uh, someone might get missed, you know, Mm-hmm. And it's it's like any other network, you know. They're they're all um, always going to be a loophole or some, something that you know some people like this guy more than the other guy. When the other guy may be, uh, you know, more a, a better candidate. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's flaws in every system, really, Derek. Yeah. Well, I do know what you're saying. I mean, uh, a lot of people will say that uh, there has been too much. Uh, Anglo or uh, Scottish and American, uh, excuse me, an English influence uh, as the game developed in the 80s and the 90s. Um, and let's say some of the German guys got kind of cut out of that that uh, that whole uh, growth period. But uh, it's a tricky system. It There is a little bit of nepotism there, and uh, you got to play politics, and it's just like anything else in life, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I um, you know, it's good that people are aware of it these days. I think, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, it was just the way that it was, and there wasn't much talk about it. It was like the big elephant in the middle of the room, so to speak. Yeah. And now people are aware of it, and I think that gives dark horse candidates a little more of an opportunity to step forward, maybe. I certainly hope so, um, because we certainly don't want anybody looked over because maybe – um, you know, they don't, uh, um, always come off, uh, in a certain way, or they're not political enough, or they don't say the right things all the time. And it would be, I think, a, a, an unfortunate thing if we missed out on some great coaches just because they didn't know the right people. Well, look, look at, look at what, uh, Cabrera has done with the U-17s. He wasn't with the USSF, uh, family, but they brought in a new person and, uh, he cut out the whole... You know, prima donna type uh, player aspect of the U17s, and you know wh- whether you see that as a good thing or whether you see that as a bad thing. I think uh, it's great that the USSF actually extended their arm outside of the USSF family. He's a great example of someone who was a dark horse candidate who's made it more you know acceptable to take mm-hmm. a look outside the box. Exactly. Yeah. Well, let's hope we see more of that. And of course, we unfortunately are out of time. And uh, I want to thank you, Charles, for coming on the show. It was fun. We learned some uh, learned some new things, and it was good to kind of reminisce 
go back to the 80s and 90s when <laughs> Brett and I were players and you were a coach and uh, kind of revisit those moments. Well, Andrew, what did I appreciate you asking me to be on. It's been a real treat for me. Thank you. Thanks so much, Charles, and have a uh, great rest of the evening. You too, guys. All right. Take care.